which we will uh, have a look at Quest. The uh, pretty basic, I want to say, uh, role-playing game. It's very... Extremely basic, extremely pared down, good for kids, 10 up. Yeah. Um, it keeps the... It keeps the um, D twenty roll from D and D, but it's just a single range. You, whenever you do something that has a chance to, you know, succeed or fail, you roll a die, a D twenty, and on a twenty, it's a triumph, critical success. On a one, it's a catastrophe, critical failure. Eleven to nineteen, success. Two to five, failure, and then in the middle, six to ten, we have the tough choice. Similar to... Which is always something that I like for mid-rolls as a... in in games. Like, I think it keeps... I think it keeps things interesting. Like, a crit, either way, in D&D is interesting. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. But a mid-roll that just fails is sad. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I missed by two. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) I... Hit exactly. That's that's exciting sometimes. But uh, yeah, similar to Powered by the Apocalypse, we've got the middle range here where maybe you get what you want, but something bad happens as well. Yeah. Or um, sometimes tough choices. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you succeed, but there's a cost. The guide will give you a choice. The guide, the GM, will give you a choice between um, do you take some damage or do you drop your magic sword into the bottomless pit, never to be seen again. Yeah. You know, your choice. <laughs> um. So, the character design in this one is super basic. We've got eight roles, similar to basically your character classes. Um, and then once you uh, once you pick your role, you pick... I mean, there's all kinds of stuff on character building, of course. There's, you know, uh, a lot of basic stuff on how to make a role-playing game character. Yeah. This is what I look like. This is my vibe. This is what I wear. This is where I'm from. You know... Uh, it does have, well, you pick one ideal and one flaw, similar to, almost identical to 5th edition D&D, but mm-hmm. this is just for character purpose, not for any mechanical purpose, like the inspiration mechanic in yeah. D&D. Um, gear is super basic. Uh, unarmed attacks do one damage. Weapons do two damage. Choose whatever weapons you want. It's, do you have a sword? A spear? Whatever. It does two damage. And do you have a hammer? cool i'm not gonna tell you it does bludgeoning damage or anything like that it's just a weapon and it does do damage yeah you got a bow cool it does two damage far away (laughs) (laughs) super basic um so yeah basic uh and when you make your character you'll choose six once you choose your role like our this is the fighter here you then choose six abilities Mm -hmm. and these come in different paths this one is the dueling path with these abilities in order. And basically, if you you have to buy them in order if you want. If you want to be a dueler, you have to get this, then this, then this, then this, etc. Um, but you don't have to commit to one. You can be like, I just want two of these, and then I'm going to go over to this one and take two of these, and then I'm going to go over to this one, take so one of these. So it's very customizable. Fighters have the three paths, dueling, camaraderie, or, or tactics. Yep. Leadership and tactics. So... Within that, there's a lot of room oh, for customization. Oh, body, body as well, which we didn't even look at. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so everyone, all of them have a lot of uh, different... Paths for customization, but it's laid out in this really easy to follow way. Like, I really appreciate the way that the design of the rule book makes yeah. it easy to see what's going on and what you're doing. You yeah, know? it's really well laid out. And it's just really good at conveying what's going on i feel it's body you can take technique you always do two damage even when you're just punching so now you've made a monk by Mm -hmm. taking a fighter who uses body you know um and then and all these abilities are pretty straightforward it just says what it does um there's a cost for some of them like this flow costs one and this defy death costs four Mm -hmm. um there's and am I right that there's no other, like, there's no ability scores? This is just... There are no ability scores. The uh, You have things you can do, and whenever there's a chance that something... Whenever we need to interject 
inject randomness. It's just we're rolling for the fates. It's not interesting. I yeah. your the fact that you're better at things is going to be represented with your special effects. Yeah, like, which are you know things you can do in any mode of the game that you're playing, whether you're in a fight or you're you know testing your skill. The, it's all just from these like five possible builds of fighter that you can take you know and how far you've gone you know if you want a really jovial camaraderie based fighter you go one path and right and then you're better at i'm sure talking to people and yeah you've got uh the camaraderie is very much a support character yeah. you can help people heal you can help people recover their adventure points that's the one you've got two resources you have to okay. track yeah uh hit points um you, everybody has 10 when you go to zero, uh, you're fine, but then when you get hit, you might die. <laughs> so, uh, and if you get hit and don't die, you might go unconscious if the uh, um, game master decides to make that the case. Right. Uh, basically, like attacks generally do one or two damage, crits will some will do double damage. The uh, um, and when you when you take damage with you when you're already at zero, you roll a d20 and try to score higher than the amount of damage you just took. So you get hit for two, roll that d20 and try and get a three or higher to not just die if you were right. at zero. Um, really basic. The other one is adventure points. Mm -hmm. You start your adventuring career with ten adventure points. Um, you get five adventure points at the end of each session. Okay. And they can also be awarded during play by the game master, similar to you know, inspiration, Benny's hero points, whatever game you're playing has a resource to hand out. Mm -hmm. um, and all of your abilities, all of these abilities that we're buying will have a cost associated with right. them. So like provoke, um, which is your basic taunt for a, uh, a fighter type costs zero. You can do that all day long. Um, but intercept, which is um, your you block, block somebody's attack. Oh, you know, you're attacking my ally. My fighter's going to jump in the way, and uh, you you hit me instead. That costs you one adventure point. So, nice. so I it, I made this comparison when we were first looking at it, but it feels in the character building and in the way that a player would engage with the game, not unlike a super simplified version of uh, D and D four E. Yeah, because of this, because it has you know, because you'll have everyone has customization options that are basically the same kinds of things right and then the the main resource is you know it, you is these uh you know you can do this once per day you can do this you know <laughs> right every time you get back a you know some exhaustion or whatever it's very it's very appealing to me in that way because i feel like Thori had this like you can plug in any kind of character that you you know haven't played before and basically know how to play that play that build right and i feel like this feels similar in a way that really sort of encourages exploration which i think is wonderful for a game that's partially marketed to kids right i agree and uh, one thing that 4e did that made it really easy to introduce new gamers um was they had the option to have all of your have your character basically on cards rather than a yes. character sheet, and so you could give somebody okay, here's your cool double attack that you can do once per encounter, and here's your cool spell that you can do once per day, and you give them a card, and they can look at it and go, oh, my option is this card or this card or this card. Um, this game actually has that as well. Mm -hmm. um, they sell a deck of cards that has all of these abilities in it and uh, some treasures and monsters, I think. And so you, as you're building your character, you can just go, okay, I've got this ability and this ability, and they're just laid out in front of you, and you can. Right. Uh, and I think that's that's that tactile experience is really good for teaching uh, new players. I feel um, though, obviously, we're focused on how to convert your game uh, with our uh, taste test. But uh, first impression on this one is super straightforward, easy to approach, fairly basic game. Seems to be uh, pointed towards uh, younger players. Yeah, if you're already playing D&D 5e, this might seem a little bit too simplified. But if you're playing D&D 5e, but you're throwing a bunch of rules out the window because it's fucking hard to remember all the rules, this one might be wonderful because it really does pare down and simplify 
the rules and gets out of the way of doing cool things and telling a cool story to each other. So right, yeah, and it's yeah, I agree. And so let's let's yeah. start to look at uh, look at the actual mechanics here. Let's uh, uh, we've already built a couple of our characters, um, our familiar trio of of zaps, punch, and heals. Um, we've already built punch, who. Um, has an axe and a shield and a throwing axe because I was just told to pick three items and kiln gauze which repairs you get to pick one useful item from a very short list of like eight or ten mm -hmm. items uh, which... I think they've got more books coming out with obviously more supplemental material but yeah I would assume so yeah but kiln gauze is just you can repair a broken weapon I don't know if there's any rules for breaking weapons in this game um, maybe it could be a cost that the game master is like, oh, you succeeded, but at a cost. Do you, you know, kill the guy but break your axe? Okay, now you can fix it with your killing gods. That's always a wonderful bit of world building for me is just putting items in and so you know something can happen. Right. Like, that always tickles me. Um, and then we, we didn't fill out all the... Uh, I, I love that this character sheet is just, here's my name, here's... How old I am. Here's my the one mechanical thing it has on here is here's my role. I'm the party's role, and then it's just you know people notice this about my body and my face and my vibe. I wear this and this. I you know, move like this. Uh, my people are known for this. These are my ideals and my flaws and my dreams. And that's basically it. Character sheet, inventory, and then the most mechanical part of it is the six abilities that we have chosen for punch. Uh, we've got charge. Oh, uh, you know, got counterattack. An enemy within reach rolls a tough choice or worse on a basic attack against you. You parry their attack, take no damage, and if they roll a failure or worse, you also get to make an attack on them. Does not count as your turn. Uh, wild attack, which is just try for extra damage. Oh, there we go. On a one and wild attack, your weapon breaks. Just that quickly. We found it. I didn't even set that up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, and, you know, I've, I put some of this. We've been using this in Foundry. This game is just barely supported in uh, uh, the virtual tabletop community. They, they have the engine in here, but there's literally nothing pre-built in. Right. I, I had to go in and, and basically copy-paste everything we needed. But, uh, but from we, what we can see in the rules, it doesn't look like... It, it looks like it can be easily played theater of the mind. There's not really much in the way of tactical, like measuring or you know. No, happening. they've got a, a they've got a fantastic uh, range system here. The distance system: you are in reach, i.e., you could hit something. You are nearby, or you could move this turn and hit it. You're in range. Yeah, you're too too far away to uh, to get up and hit it in melee, but you could hit it with a ranged weapon and you're too far. Mm -hmm. It's just too far away. And that's it. That's <laughs> that. Just use those ranges. You know, uh, a lot of games do this with their, yeah. uh, <coughs> for, for their theater of the mind, you mm -hmm. know, just how far away or is it? I don't know. It's pretty near. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. I'll move up to it and hit it. Um, don't have to get too, too fussy with the attack tracking where everybody is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we just picked, we picked out some abilities for each of them. They each get six abilities. Um, yeah, I don't, and that's it. We just picked six that sounded good. And they level... Uh, every session, at the end of every session, you pick one new ability um, that you can start using next session. And you get five new ac adventure points. I keep calling them action points. Mm -hmm. um, to spend you know, for your next... So there's no cap on adventure points. If I sit here and don't use any of my abilities, I will at minimum be at 15 after one session and 20 after two sessions, uh, plus anything that we get from doing uh, story rewards or role-playing rewards that the Game Master gives us. Mm -hmm. And then I can just unleash all of my abilities in a row if I want. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so our wizard is fairly similar. Like, again, we just, just picked six abilities. We gave them a magic candle, which is basically a light spell because they have light in D and D. Um, that's our. That's about the, as much conversion as we did. We gave them a bow and arrow because they're an elf. Mm -hmm. um, and then we we selected some spells, some abilities which are 
spells. Uh, the spells are a little more complicated than the fighter. Um, most of them have mo- uh, about half of them here have multiple options on how to cast. Like last light here can be cast either using three adventure points to deal six damage and uh, melt a hole in steel objects and light anything flammable, or you can spend six action points to instantly kill commoners and minions <laughs> and deal 12 damage to bosses. Um, you know, so it's just, okay, it's a boss fight. I'm going all in. Here's my 12 damage attack. I don't think we've uh, provided enough challenge to these people. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and I, adventure points are regained in game through, uh, d- just doing cool Doing, things. doing quests. Uh, the guide is instructed to uh, give you, uh, you know, basically where you would give experience points, quest experience points in a lot of games, or, um, but also... Like, yeah, like um, inspiration in D&D 5e sort of role play. I think so. I didn't, I didn't do a deep dive into it, but I'm pretty sure there's a... There's a whole guide on when, when to give out adventure points. Right. Uh, but I don't. I didn't spend a lot of pay a lot of attention to it. I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, it's a resource that will be flowing as the game goes on. Uh, yep. All right. So let's uh, work through some uh, some challenges. Uh, we still need to finish heals. Oh, yeah. oh, that's um, yeah. We have uh, we've selected the role. Uh, doctor, because it's the closest to cleric, and we. So let's go look at the doctor role here. Yeah, First I thing. love the way the the classes and their possible, you know, um, leveling routes are just fascinating and so innovative. And the art is so cute. Yeah. And, uh, Ah, what a joy. <laughs> so we've got six abilities to pick, and again, you have to start at the bottom. You can't just jump into healing and go, I want restore. That looks amazing. If I want restore, I have to buy mend and relieve and heal and then restore. And there's a little guide there at the top to let you know the order. Um, so mend makes a lot of sense. I'm going to restore five hit points. It's our cure wounds. Mm-hmm. Um, cannot do this during combat, so it's, I guess it's not quite cure wounds. Uh, relieve... You alleviate some anxiety and discomfort. Um, frankly, I don't know how much we'll be using that, but it leads into heal, mm-hmm. which is the uh, which is the healing spell you can use in combat. So you embrace a creature with a caring touch and restore all of their hit points. Uh, costs two adventure points, but I really like this on on these more powerful healing abilities. Uh, some if you're healing somebody else they can provide some of the points to pay for the cost of the spell. So your cleric doesn't have to be stuck with all of the, well, all my stuff is just here to heal everybody. I can't do cool stuff. Yeah, I can do cool stuff, and if you've got points left over after getting uh, beat up, you can help me cast this healing spell on you, which is a really nice uh, uh, feature. So I'm going to grab Mend and Heal and Relieve on our... uh, A little bit like Healing Surges. A little bit like healing surges, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna make him a doctor. We're gonna give him these conveniently already entered into the system healing powers. Um, and then we wanted to. The alteration didn't really seem to fit with what we were bringing over from D and D. It's got a yeah. sleep spell. It's got a feign death. Um, it's got calcify, which is a uh, like this is very druid like, frankly. Yeah. We've got uh, your, um, I forgot, I'm trying to remember what the spell is called in uh, uh, D&D, where you like make bark armor or something like that. Uh, yeah. I think it's like bark skin or something. Bark skin, yeah. Um, so you've got that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got necromancy. We've decided to give our guy death sense, which lets him sense where there are uh, spirits nearby or yeah. sense where uh, things have died and how they were killed and or uh allowed to see spirits interesting happen when the zombies come out yeah you can naturally sense whether any remnants of the dead are nearby (laughs) not their positions but yeah we thought that would uh 
fit in nicely with his uh, tendency to um, be paranoid about where the zombies are. And lastly, we got him. What did we get? Ah, did we get examination? I think we did. Yeah. Uh, examine the dead. You can uh, evaluate a corpse within reach and determine its time and date of death. And diagnose, which I think we really liked when, uh, um, mm-hmm. because it's got a mini game in it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, costs nothing. You just roll the die, but it says it's for diagnosing diseases or mysterious afflictions like curses. Um, you must correct correctly guess the entire name of the affliction. If your guess is wrong, the spell fails, and now you and then you must spend one action point to try again. It's basically a game of wheel of fortune. Yeah, I was gonna say hangman. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've well, got it's got a, a random. Um, oh, that's true. We've got the, we've got to spin the so. wheel. So <laughs> they're gonna so they're going to give you a, a, a some blanks with how many you know letters and word breaks are in there, and you can start guessing letters. If you guess a letter correctly, um, but you, let's see, when do you roll the die? Uh, so it's got a die roll here. I think you roll the die to start. Um, and on a 1 to 10, the guide fills, fills in one consonant. 11 to 19, one vowel and two consonants. On a crit, they fill in half of the word, half of the name for you. And then you start guessing. And once you... If you're guessing correctly six times, the spell fails. Um, so it's just a really cute mini game. There's yeah. a lot of stuff like that in here. Um, it feels like you know I keep looking at things and being like, man, why wasn't school that? <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> why weren't we just playing this game the entire K twelve? Right. Oh, God. <laughs> Diagnose and examine the dead. Um, I think those are out of order, but whatever. Okay, so we've got our basic stuff, and hopefully we remember what our characters do. Um, we need some inventory for heels. Uh, I'll give him a staff and uh, his very important eye patch. Don't know what it does. And um, uh, holy symbol, I guess. The inventory is really straightforward as well. You get twelve slots. You get tw- you can carry twelve things. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, we're not gonna say, well, this one's really heavy and this one's really light. It's just you get twelve things. You don't. Not going to get too complicated with uh, with your character sheet. Uh, he gets one useful item. You should probably pick that and see if uh, see if it's any use here. A magic rope would be super useful. That yeah. might be might be meta gaming. Uh, sure. Friend flute, small whistle that knows who your friends are. When you blow in the whistle, only your friends nearby can hear its sound. Mm-hmm. It's super nice for if they get lost in the woods. Brell's yeah. tent in a tin is a uh, uh, nice yeah. uh, magic. Pavilion tent that uh, comes in a can. You just throw it down, and it uh, turns into a giant tent that can fit thirty people. I'm I, I, I'm going to give him that. Yeah, that's great for taking that uh, that rest that they're going to need to do at some yeah. point. Okay, and we're off. So, um, there's there is a a codified um, several modes of the game. You know, we have encounter mode, like most of these games have. We have trials, which are um, when things are happening, you know, outside of combat. Generally, when, when things are challenging, uh, the rule for, for trials is people can do whatever they want. You can say whatever you're doing. We're just telling a story together. There's no, I'm going to check this skill. I'm going to test that skill. You right. just say what you're doing. It could be use one of your abilities. Um, could be not. or We're not going to get too tied up on whether we're burning resources or not. And then every every player has to take a, a, an action during each round of the trial. And when you take your turn during a trial, you have to roll the die. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're doing, you roll the die, and we're going to find out how it goes. Mm-hmm. So, and that's it. That's, that's nice. basically how skills work. You want to jump yeah. the gap? Roll the die. You want to talk to the person? Roll the die. You want to, you know whatever you want to do <laughs> you want to try and jump to the moon roll the die yeah. and you can use your uh your powers that you've chosen in trials as well correct so like uh zaps here could use telekinesis to help people get across you may move an object or creature no larger than an elephant <laughs> if you move it gently you control it for up to 10 seconds 
or you may forcefully throw it up to five meters away and hit it for two hit points. Um, so that could be super useful. So yeah, let's uh, let's get this started. We we are ah oh, one thing I must mention is some um, some of the spells uh, instruct you to roll the die, and some of them do not. They just hit. Like the magic strike, which is basically magic missile. For zero points, you I've messed up this uh, this chart, but uh, you roll the die to see if you hit. If you spend two adventure points on it, it's like a D and D magic missile. A, it hits twice twice as hard. B, you don't need to roll the die; it's just going to hit. Um, so that is that is an interesting. I need to check on that, uh, but yeah. Um. So yeah, we've got our three characters. They have approached this. Uh, we are in trial mode. We are dealing so with a challenge. In our first, uh, in our five E scenario, we had punch, jump across, and secure a rope. Yes, uh, I don't know if we've brought a rope this time because inventory is very, very sparse in this game. Uh, we don't have that kind of. Uh, yep, yeah, nobody thought to bring a rope. There was a magic rope available. Heels yeah. decided to bring a tent instead. <laughs> sure. um, we have zaps who could uh, use telekinesis to float people across. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Um, costs costs various amounts for each. You may increase the distance. You can throw the creature by five meters. Uh, can they uh, pop the tent and have zaps float them all across in the tent? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> So, because we're in challenge mode, yeah. we need to roll to, to make sure things don't go poorly. Right. Like, if we were just hanging out and we wanted to float a tent around, no problem. But it might get windy, there might, uh, it might snag on something. We're going to find out. So first, yeah. heals, and, and this is great yeah, for, this, uh, for this module. In, you've got all these abilities and whatnot. Mostly, the most important thing is right here, just roll the die. Just mm -hmm. roll the die. There's only one... Thing to check. Yeah. Hey, Heels has successfully put up the tent without nice. without problem. A giant thirty foot pavilion tent, which we're going to classify as smaller than an elephant, simply for weight purposes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Zaps can spend extra points to use telekinesis on larger things. Uh, well, you know, I, I don't know if that's exactly what it says, but maybe we'll do that. Okay, so I'm not sure what Punch has to do in this. Um, hold on, I guess. Punch will need to hold on. So let's have Zaps float everything. Punch Just... can hang off the side of the ballast. <laughs> <laughs> Punch is going to cast Telekinesis, uh, costing them one adventure point. We'll hopefully float everybody over in ten seconds. Punch. So let's see how that goes. Even though there's not normally a roll for Telekinesis because we're in challenge mode, mm -hmm. we have to roll die. Zaps is successful. Very good. And then Punch will try to not get distracted or, you know, mm. do whatever Punch does. Punch is fine. So our group has floated us across in a pavilion tent <laughs> easily. And again, this is because they've limited the things that you can do so much. It, I think it actually, you know, encourages creativity. Like, I've got three things. What am I going to do with them? Right. Yeah, there's... <laughs> I've got a, it's not the typical D and D. Well, I've got this giant adventuring kid, and here's forty seven things, and I guess I'm going to do the most basic normal thing, which is try to get across using you know uh, using very normal means of getting across. Instead, we've immediately yeah. set there's, these. There's no rules for jumping, but there's a a tent and telekinesis. So right. Uh, so I need to go back to uh, trials. There's actually a uh, similar to skill challenges in fourth edition. There is there is a um, a built in. They should do this many successes before they fail. Gotcha. Um, da, 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 da. Have the players roll the die each time they try to deal with the challenge. Then describe the consequences. Obviously, if we were doing this, if we weren't just taste testing this, there would be a lot more description, a lot yeah. more role playing. As, yeah. You know. Um, so I had seen somewhere that uh, um, one of their one of their free adventures they had showed uh, a trial where it was basically um, 
you must get this many successes before you get that many failures. And I was thinking that our our entire journey here is basically one one big trial. Um, and we'll just see how many successes versus failures they have at right. the end of it. So right now they're at three successes and zero failures. Um, this is because this is all going to be looped into one, basically one big challenge, one big trial. Uh, it should go a lot more quickly as well. And the whole thing will have a cumulative effect when they get to the end to see if something bad happens. Um, it basically, and that's yeah, just completely up to GM Fiat, you know, yeah. obviously I can, we can have bad things happen to them in the middle, but we could, we could say, okay, that was an exhausting journey. Whoever had the most failures takes two damage or yeah. roll the die to see um, what happens. Maybe on a crit, you're fine, but on a hard choice, you have to decide between taking damage or breaking an item or something like that, right? Um, so we've got our, again, we've got our, um, our, of our three bridges trial, we've got the, uh, the bridge with the faulty board, the, yeah. it's going to fall away. Um, is there a way to like, look or examine it in any of these characters? Uh, let's see. Charge, counterattack, intercept, provoke, wild attack. Not really. Uh, so. Last light is an attack spell. Sense magic. Read sense magic. Uh, get a... To detect magic, basically. You get a t gentle tingling feeling in your bones whenever you're near a powerful source of magic. That's not going to help much. Um, who am I missing? Diagnose death sense. Can sense spirits. That's free. Are there any dead spirits around? No. Okay. Um, mend. Does that work on... Well, that's creatures only, so we can't try and fix the bridge. So no, there's nothing particular for looking for these... Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, this is a case where we set this up for D&D &D with this is what the problem is. Yeah. And in like Powered by the Apocalypse and this, I feel like these are problems that would pop up more spontaneously. Like here's a bridge you're crossing. Uh, everybody wants to cross the bridge? Okay, we're just going to walk across the bridge. There's, nobody's doing anything special or keeping an eye out for mm -hmm. monsters or whatever. I'm just going to roll the die. If everybody gets a success there's no problem with the bridge or they never yeah. found the problem with the bridge. Yeah. And it allows for more spontaneous adventure. I don't have to think of a problem until there's a problem and then I just right. can improv one. Yeah. I like that a lot. So let's say we're sending... As, as someone who really enjoys the I'm going to interpret what that die roll means aspect of tabletop games, yeah, that's yeah. really appealing to me. Right? <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just roll them across here. Punch is gonna... Oh, Punch! Punch oh. must face a tough choice. So Punch has clearly just uh, knocked loose a uh, a piece of uh, of the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, well, so I'll say, so as GM, I could say, okay, um, you lose your, your balance while you're going, but you said you were on watch for enemies, so you had your throwing axe in your hand. Mm -hmm. And as you lose your balance, either you catch yourself and don't take damage, uh or, sorry, either you, you hold on to your axe, but you fall on your face and take two damage, or you catch yourself, but you drop your axe and it's it's gone forever. Oh my god. Yeah. That's, uh... Now, the axe counts as gear for punch, right? Which is an item class that will come back after a little bit of downtime? Yeah, that's fellowship you're thinking of. This... Damn it. <laughs> Playing too many games at once. Okay. Uh, um, I nope. thought there was something in this. Uh... Let me check. Like, there's fancy things that are, and then there, there's just your own. That was that was fellowship as well. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um. Definitely talks about running out of stuff if you lose equipment. Okay. Um. It also talks about how there's basically no costs for getting stuff back. Um. That that might be what you're thinking of. There's no money in That's this right. game. Yep. Yeah. Common items, you can just be like, well, we're in town. I'm going to buy myself a new throwing axe. Right. And we're not going to say, okay. It, yeah, it's not a problem. Right. It's just a, it's a problem for the current journey, but it's not a, yeah. a long term. Well, I think Punch is going to try and hold on to her axe. Cause... Yeah. She's a fighter. She's got a cleric nearby. Hold on to that axe. Take the two damage. Okay. Tough choice has been made. Mm -hmm. um, but she's across. 
Heels is falling behind again. Um, you know, and how, how is he going across? Well, he's probably doing his sense spirits because it's free to make sure there's no ghosts that are pushing people down. Um, and he faces a catastrophe. He oh has critically oh. failed. Oh, no. Um, Heels, buddy. There he goes, right over the side. Um, Jesus. Uh, so he's 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 falling over the side. Zaps, got any telekinesis spells you want to use? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say as uh, so. They already cast one. They already used one. Um, so yeah, we're gonna in order to grab him. I'm going to say you're going to have to boost it. It's going to be two adventure points, mm-hmm. and you're going to have to roll for it to see if you catch him. Successful. Okay, oh. like a hard choice might have been like you catch him, but you brought him back so hard that yeah. he takes some damage from yeah. this. So, and we're not going to ask Zaps to do anything else for this scene. That Zaps right. now doesn't have to because they made because they did something during the mm-hmm. trial. They've passed this scene, and it was more dramatic. We don't yeah. have to go. Okay, now how do you walk across the bridge? Right. That's not interesting. What's interesting is whether heals you know plummets to his death. Mm-hmm. First, whether punches axe plummets to is its death, then heals. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clearly I've put this bridge much higher up than it is pictured at this time. <laughs> it's a ca- catastrophic failure. That's that, that's got to be awful. Yeah. Okay. Um. Whew. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look at this relieve spell. Um. So I, I could, at this point, if I want to, like, tap into their adventure points. And I kind of do, because it's a very short adventure. I could say that uh, Heels is currently suffering from, you know, some, some confusion, some anxiety. Uh, and it's going to negatively affect his decisions over the next hour. Right. And he can cast this Relieve spell on himself to get rid of that. Yeah, he's in, yeah, in other game parlance, he is shaken. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, okay, then we've got our section of the of the woods where we try not to get lost in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, we're just going to be this. That is one thing. Mechanically speaking, there is very little variety to this game. Yes, it is all in the play. Yeah, we go to another scene and we're just going to roll the die, mm-hmm. and because we are playing the game, we know the consequences. We know the like the one on crossing the broken bridge for heels is you fall off the side yeah previously heels was popping open that tent a one might mean oops you bought a faulty one (laughs) (laughs) you know um but let's keep rolling dice until something interesting happens and then roll to see what happens with the interesting thing and then yeah and it move to the next thing you're rolling dice for it uses that same it's not uh, it actually is kind of in there. Um, the initiative order during trials and during mm-hmm. uh, encounters is completely up to the uh, the GM, the guy, right. and it seems to follow the same principle as like fellowship with the spotlight, mm-hmm. where like something bad happened to heels. Uh, we immediately go, okay, Zaps hasn't done anything yet. Zaps, what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. If Zaps had gone first, it would have been punch. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, I don't know what punch would have done about it. Uh... <laughs> Dive after oh, him yes. and yeah. uh, and grab him and grab onto this the 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 cliffside and sure, you know something yeah, like yeah. that right something dramatic and fightery and physical. Mm. All right, so we are going to have Punch continue leading the way uh, as trying not to get lost in the woods. Successful, she has found a good path. Everything's going fine. Um, heels. Is doing his spirit sense because it's free, so it's pretty much always on. And Zaps has uh, sense magic, which is free, so it's pretty much always on. Mm-hmm. It's a good tool for the game master. Oh, you've got yeah. spirit sense? I can always say, ooh, you hear a spooky ghost thing. Yeah. So heals. Here's a spooky ghost thing. And let's see how he feels about it. Oh, 19. He's, he uh, is able to resist the call to go get uh, lost in the woods. <laughs> like our uh, Which characters got lost in the woods? I don't know. Oh, yes. Don't remember which game we yeah. did where everyone got lost in the woods. Um, so Zaps is going to detect some some sort of magic thing. So, and again, it's a it's a trap out in the woods. And we're all successful. Everybody, we rolled one die. Everyone's successful. We got 
Uh, so we just to sum up, we have had we had three successes over here. We had three successes over here. Over here, we had um, one. Success. We had a yeah. catastrophe, a success, and a um, tough choice. Yeah. That was a, that was a real mixed bag on, on that <laughs> one. Okay, now we've got our troll bridge, mm -hmm. which um, for Fellowship we made an actual encounter. For the D&D type games, we didn't want to spend as much time as it would take to do an actual encounter, so yeah. we just made it a quick roll. Again, this is trial mode. We, we only really have the one combat so... with our acolyte and... There's so the guide knows that there's a possible troll here, so that if someone rolls low, they might encounter it. Yes. And then they'll have to figure out how to deal with that. Correct. All right. And yeah, so that's uh, so that's what we'll do. So punch will... Uh, oh, just... This would, again, obviously this is a pretty repetitive scenario. There's a bridge. What do you do? There's another yeah, bridge. What do you yeah. do? There's another bridge. What do you do? But... It's just to keep this simple. All right, punch is across the bridge. No problem. No troll. We'll just keep going in the same order because clearly Zaps' telekinesis is needed to save uh, <laughs> save whatever happens to heals. Uh, roll die. Tough choice. Okay, heals. I think the, the troll wants a toll. The troll wants a toll. toll tr troll toll must be paid. It's a toll bridge. It is, indeed. So, heals. Tough choice. Do you want to pay the toll, i.e. give him one of your valuable items, like the tent in a tin, or the or your holy symbol, um, or do you want to get into a fight with him, which is then, we're then going to make yeah. people take think? damage? Uh, I think just give him the tent. Yeah. Here's... So they're not going to have that to rest. So they won't have that for resting. Correct. I mean, they'll still be able to rest, but yeah. uh, but I kind of got it for the rest. So yeah, there's a there's a cost. There's... Well, it's already served its purpose. Had we had they uh, decided to fight the troll, then they would need the rest more because they would be more beat up. So sure. yeah. uh, zaps. Well, uh, well, that's going on. What do you do? Is a uh, you know, it'd be a very straightforward. Does zaps try and steal the tent back? Does zaps Ooh. just scamper back across? Does zaps try and try and you know? Mm -hmm. trick the troll into like oh well the uh, here's how the the tent works and da, 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 you know come on mm -hmm. i feel like most role playing groups the last person given a choice in a scenario where they have failed is going to try to make it right is yeah. going to try to get something back so zaps is going to try to trick the troll into giving them the uh, the tent back um we have no we have no mechanics for this uh, we just have the D20. I'm sure I there are so many roles and ability paths. I'm sure there's somebody in here who's good at talking to people and gets mm -hmm. some sort of benefit when they're doing this this sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Zaps did not. Zaps is facing a tough choice. Um, <laughs> could trade the magic candle for the, uh, for the tent. Ooh. Could... Um, just could okay. grab the tent and run at the uh, expense of taking two damage as the troll punches them. Mm -hmm. um, Think trading the magic candle is funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you. No, I'm not going to pay the toll, I, but I will. I'll trade you this candle for that tent. And so actually gets out of it with only one toll being paid instead of yeah. two. I dig it. Uh, I'm going to replace this candle with a tent. And we're through. And now Heels is going to be like, where did you get this tent from? <laughs> it's my tent now. <laughs> it's my tent. Ah. I, I traded with a troll for it. <laughs> okay, now at this point, we had them rest in other games. Yeah. And uh, so what what we're going to do is we're going to look at the trial as a whole now. Okay. They've gone through it. I believe Heels had the most failures. Yeah. He had the catastrophic failure and the normal failure. Yeah, Everybody yeah, else... Yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, One mixed choice of these. Yeah. Right. So Heels is exhausted by this, and as GM, I'm going to just say take two damage. Um, it's right. not necessarily physical damage. It's just, whoo, I'm tired. I, I That was a rough journey. Okay. So we've got, um, as far as healing, we've got the uh, heal ability costs two adventure points and 
gets everybody or gets one person all of their hit points but we're at like eight and ten and eight so it's not really necessary um there's mend which i think can only get you above half don't gently touch a creature immediately restoring five does not remove impairments Uh, so that's that's less we might restore health to our fighter just in case for one action point can't use it during combat so that seems fairly straightforward uh oh summon the blood was one of us uh so we're regrouping um this is this is punch's uh camaraderie ability uh you bolster the spirits of your party by reciting a poem you must recite a poem at the table for your friends (laughs) <laughs> you can write your own or read one from another author, like from a book or a movie or a TV show. Uh, this, there are a Again, few... this is like, oh, I love mini games. Yeah. What they, the heck? When, it's, when it introduces the basic rules at the very start of the book, it talks about at the table. Occasionally, you will be instructed to do things at the table. Mm-hmm. If you're uncomfortable doing these things, talk to your uh, guide about, you know, alternatives or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, it really keeps things interesting and different and you know as you said it's really monotonous in mechanics but the things that you're asked to actually do at the table keeps things really interesting yeah (laughs) so this doesn't do anything because uh, regrouping only gets you hit points back when you're below half Mm. gets you five hit points back if you start below half so Mm. if we were all at two hit points we'd go to seven but punch could uh or maybe it caps at five. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Summon the Blood gets three extra hit points for everybody. Uh, or would, but we got through that pretty easily. I yeah, almost well, feel like I took it easy on them, frankly. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to stop. really good die rolls. They did. So we're going to go to our... Okay, we've made it through the trial. We have brought this strange device to our acolytes in order to get paid. And we go to our standard. Punch is going to try and get more money. Well, there's no money in this uh, system. Punch is going to get try and get a bigger reward. Heels is going to be suspicious of the acolyte, and Zaps is going to be looking for um, things to be going on in the background. Now, first off, Heels has had that death sense going, yeah, and is going to be able to sense that there are that there are dead things around. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, naturally sense whether any remnants of the dead are nearby, but not the positions. The guide will notify you when this sense is triggered, so I should definitely say you notice that there's some dead things around. Mm-hmm. So now... Something spooky's happening. Yeah, so now he could spend an a- adventure point to sense the location where the creatures died, or because he doesn't know the exact location, mm-hmm. and how long ago they died. Or he could see spirits in case he thinks there's... Invisible ghosts out in the woods. He could uh, be able to see I invisible. I like the sense, the place that these uh, things died because they're zombies. So it could just be like miles and miles away. <laughs> right. It's like they're here now, but they died over there. <laughs> well, well, I've actually I've changed <laughs> I've changed the acolyte for this. I've given them the ability to reanimate the dead, but yeah. I think they'll reanimate them after they've fallen again. So, mm. yeah, they could have died far away. Yeah, you don't detect anything that's died near here. Um, but you know there's something dead near here. So. You know there's something dead near here. Uh, but nothing died near here. That's good information. It's really good information. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just the acolyte sandwich. Right? It's literally just a roast beef sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Zaps is going to be sensing magic out here, trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> again, get a uh, gentle tingling feeling in your bones. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first I need to go back and charge Heels his adventure point for having gotten more information. And then Zaps is going to... Uh... Zaps can sense magic. Yeah, so for zero points, again, there's magic in the area, but not its location or nature. That's clearly going off because there are some undead. Um, I can spend one point to discern the location of the nearby magic and its general nature. Mm-hmm. For instance, the guide may reveal that you sense a magic sword, a cursed door, or an illusion. You can spend two points to study the precise nature of nearby magic 
learning its specific effects. If you use this ability to study a mysterious magic item, its name and effects are revealed. Um, I feel like they would start with location. Mm-hmm. You'd have to get the location down before you can study the precise nature, I would right. think. So we'll spend a point there to study the location and discover that there are two, you know, uh, necromancy spells going here in the uh, yeah. in the woods. And meanwhile, Punch is just chatting, <laughs> chatting angrily. We have no, uh, we ha- chat. We can use, as you mentioned, we can use any of these abilities outside of. Yeah. Um, combat provoke make a nearby creature angry at you by saying something or making a rude gesture um, for the next minute the target focuses the attention on you ignoring all others uh, I feel like punch is doing that <laughs> but we also want to see if punch is um, getting a reward out of this Yeah. so we're going to roll the die for that one 12 punch is successful um, so Punch is going to realize that, so the, the Acolyte's like, yeah, I'll give you an extra prize, because it's not going to matter, because you're going to be dead in a minute, or something, yeah. you know, <laughs> just mumbling to himself, or, you know, <laughs> or just Punch realizes that, so, right. so then we will begin combat, um, and there is no, so the general rule for this game's combat is, um, the players go first. They do all, each each of them takes a turn, mm-hmm. and then the bad guys go, and each of them takes a turn. Yeah. Um, the players go in, similar to the uh, um, Powered by the Apocalypse, it is GM choice on how things are going. We're not going to roll any dice for figuring that out. We're just going to say, mm, Zaps has the most information, knows that there's a uh, uh, necromancy spell going over here. And what do you want to do about that? Hasn't found that they're actually zombies yet, but what do you want to do about that? Um, okay, well, I'm going to freaking... Eh, whatever. We'll say that we see they're zombies, and yeah. we're just going to blow some up. I'm sure that talking amongst themselves, heels and zaps, can uh, come to a conclusion. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to just start with the basic magic strike, because I know it uh, it costs zero points. It does some damage. We're just going to try and hit one of these zombies. Ooh. Failure! Mm. <laughs> oh, the spell has failed. Alright. Uh, on a failure, does it cost? Uh, nope. Okay. So, Zaps has failed. Heals? What do you want to do? Um, heals doesn't... He- he examine the dead, sure. Uh, mostly healing stuff. You know what, Heals is actually... I'm not going to make it Heals' turn yet. It seems like Punch is going to just punch. Yeah. That's what Punch does. Um, I already provoked this guy. Next minute he focuses all of his attention on you. Uh, let's just Wild Attack. Let's just go all in on this guy. Uh, wild Attack. Attack with Reckless Power. Disregarding your safety. Describe a signature style for this attack and what it looks like when you make it. Mm-hmm. Something cool. And the roll is 19. You deal double damage. That axe normally does two damage, so it does four. Ooh. Oh, the Acolyte only had four hit points. Cause he's gone. He's gone. He will not be reanimating any of these uh, uh, zombies. He will not be casting his corrupt spell, which causes hit points that can only be healed by a spell we don't have. Nice. So that was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> because Punch is rolling unusually well today. Right? <laughs> All right. That's just how a game goes sometimes. It's just how a game goes sometimes. So heals... But I do enjoy how quick the combat is. So right. You're not getting bogged down in tactics. No. So heals is going to run up to somebody and just bonk him with, with his staff, because that's all he's really got for uh, for combat. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's just going to roll the die. It's successful, so it's going to do two damage to this zombie, which has four hit points. Goes to two. Okay. Now it is the zombie's turn. They... Uh, so cre- the basic creature in this game has two hit points and one attack. Attack is how much damage you do when you hit. Um, that's that's your sorry your basic like commoner or minion. Your basic actual opponent has four hit points and two attack, and then from there you have bosses. I didn't feel like making the acolyte a boss 
where you might have 10 or 20 or 40 hit points or something like that. Um, and you can also and also give them abilities. There's a uh, like a menu of different abilities you can give them, and you can also um, just like in this case, I took the acolyte and went into the necromancer yeah. um, subclass of the doctor and picked um, reanimate. Yeah. As basically he and the NPCs don't use adventure points. Uh, the game master is instructed to just um set a limit if they if they need to or you know just yeah. don't spam too many points worth of stuff in at once you know so i was like yeah. well i'm gonna give him reanimate and he can reanimate the two zombies one you know one each zombie once each and mm-hmm. and i gave him uh some sort of i gave him the corrupt spell which is a, a ranged spell that does a damage now and then a damage later and you can't heal that damage except with uh spell that they don't even have yet so that was that was going to be that was going to be the accolades challenge but he's gone no big deal all right (laughs) so the zombies don't have much to do they're just going this is one of the few places where the uh the guide actually rolls the die Mm -hmm. is figuring out what zombies what creatures do so this zombie is going to take an attack at heels because here he is yeah oh he must face a tough choice so he can hit and face a counter-attack um, there's actually a whole what guide. What if he hits and gets bit? Oh. Well, this is the zombie's attack, so. Okay. Uh, I, I, if, heals. If, heals, <laughs> if Heals wants to bite the zombie. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, so there's a, there's a section in the DMs in the Game Master area that has ideas for rewards. Ah, here we go. The rewards has an idea of when to give adventure points and how much, so... We finally found that answer. <laughs> um, so tough choices. Uh, you deal half damage or hurt yourself. Take damage or lose, break an so item. I think he, he deals the damage, but his arm falls off. Deals the damage, but his arm falls off. Falls off. I like it. <laughs> so he's going to deal four damage or two damage to heals, but his arm's going to fall off, costing him one hit point as well. <laughs> Uh, and then this, uh, then this cat jumps onto my keyboard. Uh, we'll have this other one uh, come running over to punch and make an attack. Successful, just straight up successful. Punch takes two damage. That's there's no different armor classes or anything like that that you can get. You can get abilities and armor that does that do different things. There's one that body. I was looking through while we were at it. Um, there's a like step of the wind or something like that. It's nice, very yeah. monk uh, ability that says while you're while you've got this going, you can only be hit by twenties. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So going back at them, we're gonna have punch and heels go first. Punch. Well, let's see. We've got. Oh, could have intercepted before. Could have counterattacked, but didn't get missed. Could charge, but uh, has something right in her face already. She's just going to wild attack again. It's easy. 16 on the wild attack chart is double damage. Going to do four damage to this unhurt zombie, killing it in one blow. Go fighter. <laughs> she's just murdering oh, everything. Uh, we'll have heels go next because he's engaged in melee with this uh, zombie. He'll just try and hit it with his staff. He succeeds doing two damage to a one hit point zombie and saving zaps from having to you know, launch a last light in there and do 12 damage to a one hit point zombie. That was it. That was, that it. was super quick. Super and... quick. Um, again, it's so good for kids 10, not because you're not doing too much, you know, you don't have to track for that long. Right. You just have a good, couple of good, you know, explosive rounds. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that was it. Just we go and roll some dice, and you know things. Obviously, that was a pretty easy fight, but they did take damage. We look at our we look at our group at the end of the day. We've got a doctor at six hit points, mm-hmm. a wizard at ten, a fighter at six. So they've taken eight of their thirty health right. damage so far. So at this point, I would give them five adventure points just for participating. 
-hmm. It says uh, in the rulebook you get five adventure points just for uh, spending time with your friends, which is very cute. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And then uh, there's al also they've achieved a a major, a very minor quest, I'd say. That was mm -hmm. that was pretty easy. So I'll give me two two more adventure points. Uh, and then end of the session, they would all go and pick one new ability, and that can either be farther into their um, into the path they're on, or they could pick a different path inside their role. Right. Um, there are rules, uh, especially when we're thinking about converting. There are rules yeah. for uh, basically dual classed characters, um, which I mean, it's super. The base of it is super easy. You can just take paths from two different roles um but there's a point where you've got too many abilities because the roles are capped at you if you take everything in fighter you're only going to have x number of abilities right? right yeah so they they put a cap on how many abilities you can have and you have to swap things out yeah um there's also a completely open role-less uh option for advanced players where any character can can start on any path but you're capped at 20 total abilities right um so if you want to make your character who has one path from seven different uh, <laughs> classes, you can. Um, obviously, you want to you want to know how the game works a little better. Uh, and lastly, on character creation, character building, there is a uh, uh, at a certain point up to the guide, you can take legendary abilities in your role, which are, don't have a path. They're just these are the wizard's legendary abilities. Uh, right. Transcendence. You embark on an incredible quest for knowledge within living things. For the next minute, you enter a trance as your consciousness expands, touching all sentient beings within a thousand kilometers of you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Plane craft. You conjure a shadow plane. <laughs> you fill it with anything you can imagine except sentient beings. Um. You know, and obviously that's very wizardy. I'm sure the fighter has something. Uh, uh, one, my favorite uh, doctor one is the, the bitter gift. You touch a creature with without self awareness and bestow them with the bitter gift of selfhood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you must recite a statement at the table about what it means to be alive. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. Right. The target experiences one million years of evolution towards self-awareness in the next minute. So, yeah, choose the Doctor class. You can play Wheel of Fortune and also be um, a nihilist, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Genesis Command. You touch a creature reversing or accelerating its development to a stage of life of your choosing. So yeah, these legendary things are pretty epic. I... Uh, the fighter has uh, limit break, as I recall, which lets you just um, defeat everybody within range within range of you, and you just to get to describe your epic uh, single-handedly route all nearby minions that you can see. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I think the sort of fourth edition thing of having characters be really um, commensurate in building characters across the board is really good for people who start with video games and yeah i think that's gonna be true of a lot of people who you know come to this game yeah i seem to recall the designers of this game are uh video game designers yeah um i don't specifically recall that we can mm -hmm. dig that up uh, for the mm -hmm. <laughs> for the the show notes uh which don't exist um mm -hmm. but yeah this is a super cute beginner role-playing game also could be you know i say it's a beginner role-playing game but it's also just a simple role-playing game we just had a lot of fun playing it we like, did if you're gonna go visit your family and you want to play a game and, you know, yeah i could totally see playing this with the non-gamer family you know over yeah. christmas or whatever because yeah. it's so basic it's just roll the d20 i I would love it if they had like a D twenty that's color coded with the uh, yeah, the one because be the two to five and six to ten are the only hard parts to remember is mm -hmm. uh, what's a failure, what's a media, where's the line of right. middle success, and you can ink one in, you can ink the a normal one in. It's so, true. Yeah. So I uh, yeah we we love this game. Uh, we're probably 
you buying a hard copy of it very yeah. soon. Yeah. Um, just a to have on the shelf. Just to have on the shelf because it's the art is adorable. The organization is really good. Like it's such a great just intro to what is a role playing game. How yeah. to play. Say what you do, then find out what happens. Yeah. Uh, explore each scene for clues. <laughs> How to do things. Doing things is simple. Just say what your character does. See a good dog? Say, I pet the dog. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> this game gets me. <laughs> right? Action scenes. It didn't doesn't actually have encounter mm-hmm. mode. It's not combat. It's an action scene. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, don't run out of hit points. <laughs> Receive what you need, trade for things you want, blah, blah, blah. That gets into more detail. Mm-hmm. Be good to each other. There's a whole thing on being respect and consent and boundaries and yeah. So yeah. Um, Highly recommend this game for new players especially, but old players could really have a great time with it too. Yeah. Uh, I Yeah, I agree. Quick, quick little adventure anytime. Um, the only negative I can see by going through their store is they don't really have anything. Um, they do have some great prompts in the book, but they don't have anything pre-built for if you want to pick this up and just right. run an adventure. Um, they don't really have that. It's very much made with, uh, the idea that you're going to improvise a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, they do have some, they gl- did have some really good, interesting, just, Yeah. That's what I was trying to find. They've got some, there's like a dozen or so example hooks to get an adventure started. Um, the the uh, the lonely giant, the fog, as the party walks down the street. A young person bursts out of the door to their home with bloodshot eyes. They run up to an adventurer, falling to their knees and gripping their clothing. Run, they say, before collapsing to the ground dead. <laughs> the party notices a strange purple fog beginning to roll out from the door of the house. That's it. That's that's a great hook that any, yeah. you know, starting game master or experienced game master can just be like, okay, I've got a got a haunted house with a weird purple fog and a dead body, and I'm gonna just make up cool stuff. Right. As we go. I didn't even read haunted house on that. I just read like a chemical reaction happened that was very very bad. Right. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think if you're, it can be daunting. I think if you're starting to look at wanting to be a game master and you kind of want to have everything codified in the way that like um D &D and definitely like um pathfinder do an adventure path right but yeah this seems like a great tool to start to get more comfortable improvising yeah i agree it's uh because it's so loose and so open uh, nothing you say nothing you, you it's really hard to mess up the rules in a game this simple you know yeah. just roll the die and then we're gonna improv off of what mm-hmm. what we saw uh so yeah i uh i agree and, and... It, i i believe they've got um if you're an educator you can get a copy of the pdf for free yes so that's wonderful and i want um our education system to just turn into this in conclusion this should be school. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Best school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I think we're done. I think we're done, yeah. All right. Thanks next for... Next week. Next week, something else. Maybe looking at maybe Genesis or... Yeah. Genesis would be a good crunchy fate. system to look at. Fate would be a less crunchy system to look at. Uh, so one of those two, depending on what our energy is like for reading rules this week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.